People who quit without notice. What straw broke the camel's back? I was a shift lead in a kitchen where none of the management knew anything about BOH. I ran grill, saute, expo, and oven solo during every peak shift. I ordered trucks, prepped all week for weekend brunch, wrote kitchen schedules, coordinated kitchen cleaning projects, contacted vendors for repairs, and generally ran the kitchens day to day. I was given the keys and started opening six days a week. I was working 55 plus hours and loving it. I expanded our brunch service to Fridays as well as Saturday Sunday and I come up with an early week menu to use up leftover brunch items and minimize waste. I helped grow weekly sales from 40-45k to 75-80k in three years. I started having issues with closing management on shifts where I wasn't there. I'd get in at 6am to open and the restaurant was left a mess and prep stocking wasn't completed. I talked to the staff and tried to get them to help out, but I had no support and follow through from the actual managers. This went on for weeks. Then one week I was in at 5 for Friday brunch prep. I was prepping sheets of bacon and went to the back to pull the biscuits I had prepped the day before. I had left them on a speed rack. I found them on a shelf stacked on top of each other. The weight of the trays had smashed every biscuit into single sheets of dough on the lower trays. The speed rack had the dressings and cold items from the line closed the night before. I did about 90% of the brunch prep by the time the opening manager showed up at 8.30. We opened at 9. I told her what was left to set up the line. She asked why I was telling her. I laid the sheets of dough in front of her, dropped my keys on top and walked out. I got nearly 50 calls from them that day and dozens of texts. I didn't respond to a single one. A few days later, the owner of the store called me and asked who he needed to fire to bring me back. I told him I'd pass and ended up finding another job in a day. A little over a year later, this restaurant shut down and was demolished to turn the space into a parking garage. I was one of about six people working at a computer repair shop. Boss told us that anybody who passes the A-plus certification test would get a $1 per hour raise. Six people take the test, five pass it, and I got the highest score of us all. Boss didn't give me a raise because you're a kid. What do you need with money? You gonna buy toys with it? I was about to be a senior in high school, 17 at the time. And yes, I quit on the spot and went to work for his competition for $2 per hour, more than he was paying me. Over a decade ago, worked at Tim Hortons. Had been there six years on overnight shift, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. We were always understaffed, usually just two people one in the back, one at front of house. Of course it is slower than during the day, that goes without saying, but there are a few rushes when certain places close. Anyways, they hire back a guy who had previously been fired like four times for just not showing up. He was on the schedule on a Sunday morning with me. There was a 20 dozen donut order, and that was the day the freezer truck arrived, and I put that away. I remember saying, if he doesn't show up, I'm probably just going home. Needless to say, he doesn't show up. Managers aren't picking up either. I think I stayed for a few hours, futilely, trying to get everything done. I closed down the front and the drive through for what I intended to be a few hours to try to at least have the order ready for 6am. But then a switch kind of flipped. I realized I wasn't going to be able to take any break the entire time. Somehow, I'd have to figure out how to put away a freezer delivery, which arrives literally at 5am which is busy as hell, and I'd be doing that as well. The people that showed up in the morning would just do their usual bitching about stuff I wasn't able to do. I'd probably get written up again for some stupid reason, or because I didn't do X or Y or whatever, and all this for like $10, 50 cents per hour. I paused and asked myself, how long do I want to work here? And right then, a bunch of drunk kids were knocking on the door, apparently confused why the lights were off and the door was locked. Because that's an enigma. I decided six years is enough and went home. Dillard's. They told me to clock out and work all night because Regino was coming to inspect the store. So they wanted me to work for eight hours moving around heavy stuff for free. Quit on the spot. Told me I wasn't a team player. I asked the manager if he would pay me for not working. He said no. I asked him why would I work without getting paid blank stare. Old sales job I had. Landed closed a big deal with a nice commission check heading my way. Found out a week or so later that the client wasn't mine. Therefore, the check would be going to the correct sales rep. 
The correct sales rep just happened to be related to the boss, and so they got a free commission check without ever lifting a finger. Left that day. My dad had cancer stage 4 lymphoma. We couldn't have our phones on the floor unless we filled out sewn paperwork with HR for emergencies. Asked my supervisor for the paperwork and he said, don't worry about it. Well, when his boss visited, he saw my phone and asked me about it, so I told the truth. My supervisor was pissed. A couple of weeks later, I get called into the HR office. My sister called to tell me my dad died. Supervisor wasn't there, but I left early. I took my bereavement and came back to work. My work bestie pulled me aside to tell me supervisor accused me of lying about my dad having cancer and dying to the entire team while I was gone. I hugged her and just left. ETA. This was 13 years ago almost. I was 20 and was out on my own for the first time in my life. He was probably 40-ish and very big and fat. No way I could have decked him, but wherever he is, fuck you, Casey. Verbal abuse from my boss. I'm an extremely patient person, but when every single word out of someone's mouth is berating and condescending, there's no price worth putting up with that, and no reason to subject yourself to it for longer than necessary. My dad died right before Christmas. I was already scheduled for a week off for family travel. HR said I could add three more days for funeral services so we could have it after the holiday. I came back and received a call from HR. The woman apologized and said she needed to ask, but would make it brief. She asked if my dad actually died. I told her yes, and she apologized again and said she didn't need anything else. Then the office manager called me into her office to tell me my boss had been telling people she thought I was faking it to get more time off. My boss was horrible in general and relied on me to do the majority of her work, which is what led her to creating the story about my dad not actually dying. She was hoping I'd be called back early from my trip. I had been interviewing for a job at another company and got an offer the day I got back. I called from my desk and accepted the offer, then packed my things and left. I once worked as a landscaper and during a slow month, some of us workers were asked to head to the boss's brother's property and help out there, which was fine. My boss asked that I pick him up in the morning and take him out there. The straw that broke the camel's back was while out there, I had filled some buckets with water and while I did turn the tap off, it was slowly dripping. My boss noticed this and had a complete meltdown. He made threats to harm to the person who left it dripping. He didn't know who it was at that point. I dropped my tools, told my boss to shove his threats, and left, leaving my boss in the middle of nowhere. Did everything they wanted. Jumped on a plane to another site on one day's notice. Ended up working 16 days straight before coming back. Took a WFH customer service job role I didn't really want just to help out on a temporary basis. We were told that half the team could have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off, and the other half could have Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Except me, who could only have Christmas Day. I signed out of the VPN, cold blocked my managers, put my laptop in a box, and posted it to head office with my resignation letter inside it. I put in that I needed off a particular weekend five months in advance. That week comes and I'm on the bar schedule. I call and say, yeah, I can't work this. I have someone in town from across the country staying with me. I put in to have off five months ago. Manager replied, you put in a request off. And it's just that, a request. So even though I was seething angry, I said, okay, and then hung up. Day of the shift comes and I waited until 15 minutes before it started to leave a message thanking them for the opportunity to cover everyone else's shifts for three years, but I wouldn't be in ever again. I still joke to this day with my friend that I quit my job for her. I used to work at IHOP in high school part-time. They were literally scheduling me during school hours and calling me when I wasn't showing up. I dropped off their stuff during the rush and left. I, as working at Sears part-time for Christmas, they never trained me. When my supervisor came in for something and found out I was working alone, he ran out before they could ask him to help. My other supervisor had a nervous breakdown and while crying, said he wanted to punch the manager but was a felon and needed the job. I just got tired of the shit because I was literally just working for Christmas money. They found me at my other job and asked me to come back because I had figured out how to do the job without being trained. I said no and they told me I'd never be able to work for Sears or Kmart again. Shiver me timbers. My boss was promoted, my manager became my new boss. 
I was written up by my new boss and had to talk to HR for showing up an hour late to an off-site meeting with a vendor. They said it was unprofessional. The hour was just scheduled breakfast. I didn't want to eat. And I had stayed up late at night working on some numbers for the business to present, which they assigned to me at 8 p.m. after we had a big work dinner and everyone else was going to the bar. My old boss, now boss's boss, came in three hours late with two other co-workers Interrupting the meeting to brag about how one of them passed out in the hotel lobby, the other just drunkenly handed the hotel staff his key card and said, Find my room, please! And the third one never made it out of the backseat of the car. They never ended up using the data I stayed up half the night collecting. When I complained about being on call 24 7 and not being paid for it, and they had me in with HR discussing my performance, I walked out two weeks before Christmas. I've only quit one job ever, in high school when I worked at a grocery store. But I quit after I somehow was the only person scheduled to work on a Saturday night. Like, literally the only person. I was 16 or 17. Granted, I lived in a small town, but being the only person working in a whole ass grocery store. To emphasize only person, not a single other person was working. Not a janitor, not a manager, not a bag boy, no one else. It was just absurd. Never went back. They never gave me the raise they promised me three months before. Then a manager tried to criticize me for not doing something that wasn't even my responsibility. I cursed him out, then cursed the main plant manager out in our meeting and left. About three days later, the plant manager called and asked why I haven't been to work. He thought I was just venting and left for the day. I told him I said I fucking quit. No sure how that wasn't clear. My boss continuously berated my performance. I got a similar job elsewhere. My new job was gonna start in a couple of weeks and I was waiting to talk with my boss and give him two weeks notice. He started criticizing me again so I gave him my keys for the building and walked out. When I got called an hour before my shift and was told to come in immediately because the manager didn't schedule enough people, when I reminded her I needed to bus, I was told to just take a cab. Stupidly, I did. And when I got in, she told me I should have made sure she did the schedule right. Then I was told I'd be opening the next morning, even though I was closing the kitchen that night. I closed. I did not open. My apron and key were on the counter waiting for her when she went to work in the morning. Heard my boss talking about my mom, who did not work for the company, on the phone to HR while at work. She said my mom was a nut job and went on to lie about how she had plans to replace me for the last few weeks. She was deeply paranoid, and earlier that week, she'd gotten wind that I was looking for a second job closer to home, which caused us to have a long talk, where I kept having to reassure her I had no plans to quit. But just her assuming I would quit had made her turn on me, like that after six years of working together, including multiple major work events, like COVID. So somehow she went from begging me not to leave, to the next day telling HR she had plans to fire me for weeks. But it was what she said about my mom during that same call that broke the camel's back. My mom was in deep grieving at the time, having found her boyfriend dead on the floor on her birthday. And I had confided in my boss that I was spending a lot of energy trying to help my mom and that it was causing me stress. As soon as I heard her say that, I packed up my desk, walked over to HR, and told them everything I'd heard and quit when they said they didn't have any other positions open elsewhere in the company and said they wouldn't take action against my boss. Fast food as a teen. Worked the manager's spot on weekends overnight. Made just over minimum wage. The manager who would relieve me on Saturday or Sunday morning was often late. Called in because my car wouldn't start and I needed a friend to drop me off so wanted to warn them I might be a few minutes late for the first time ever. It was her, and she started yelling at me over the phone. I scrambled and made it in five minutes late. If she had just made a snide remark or let it go, we probably would have been fine. But she wanted to yell and scream and berate me, and I just snapped. Yelled back that I was basically overworked and underappreciated being a manager without the title, pay, and brought up her being late, hours sometimes, to relieve me basically every weekend. And I couldn't leave because I was the manager, just like she couldn't till I showed up, and told her I quit. I was already thinking about it. I basically worked to have my car, and my car was struggling, and school was starting to suffer. The other guy that was supposed to be on nights with me saw it and quit in the spot with me. 
My first job as a dishwasher and the owners were cheap pricks. I got yelled at for emptying a metal container with a serving or two of marinara sauce at the bottom at the end of the night because I was supposed to pour it back into the container for use later. He then freaked out and started throwing other food away in the fridge because, well, we might as well not save anything. So I quit on the spot. New boss completely changed hours, expectations, without any notice or checking in with any employees. I got the worst of it. And when I stood up for myself, I was greeted with anything between crocodile tears to just full-on insults. After three months of being miserable, I walked after one final scathing insult. I regret the lack of professionalism on my end, but I don't regret leaving the job. I asked for a filing cabinet for six months, got told there was no money in the budget. I found one for free, and there was mo time to pick it up. Then they bought another supervisor a brand new truck. 